There are plenty of ways to have fun here in Scotland. You can engage with the locals. Oh God, they're coming closer. Lock the doors, Harry, lock the doors, lock the doors. Or experience the local culture. Excuse me, what exactly is this? It's tin tigers. Uh, how, how do I eat it? Or you can participate in the national sport. Okay, in all seriousness, we're here to try and get photos of something that neither of us have ever photographed before. Pine Martins. As per natural history storytelling guidelines, we have to show you some nice aerial footage first before revealing what the animal looks like. This is Scotland, by the way, where the vast majority of pine martins in the UK live. Aha, uh -huh, we're getting closer now, in amongst the trees. This is where martins love it. And this blue tit is here because we ran out of tree footage. Now this is where our beautifully crafted sequence falls apart, because now we're uh, at a barn. But this... is a pine marten. Although most martens enjoy woodland environments, they are very adaptable, and the cosy nooks and crannies in this old barn are as good as any ancient woodland oak for sheltering in. Pine martens are mustelids, in the same family as badgers and weasels. They're about the same size as a small domestic cat, with a long tail to help them balance as they run along branches and walls in search of food, mainly eggs, insects and small mammals. There are only about 4,000 individuals in the UK, and this female was filmed a while ago by our camera operator, Scott, but has since disappeared. So we're on the lookout for new martins to try and photograph. So over the last few weeks, we've had some of these trail cameras out throughout this woodland to try and see if any pine martins are here. We collected the trail cams and bingo! Oh wait, no, bugger, just a tawny owl. Some distant dark footage could be pine martins, but it's very uncertain. This is a bit better, but still, it could just be a massive squirrel. What we need is a well-lit close-up to be 100% sure. Yeah, we still can't be 100% sure that this is definitely a pine martin, but here at Gone Feral, we are risk takers, so we decided it was worth a punt. So, over to you, Harry, to explain whether we're going to photograph these in the way we usually photograph wildlife. We aren't going to photograph them in the way we would usually photograph wildlife, with a long lens. That's because pine martins are incredibly shy, and to be honest, if we tried approaching them, it just wouldn't work. So instead, we're going to use a technique called camera trapping, which is where we'll leave our cameras on their own to hopefully get some photos without us here to disturb them. The basic setup involves a camera with a wide angle lens, a sensor, and some flashes. We're using wide angle lenses to try and capture a lot of the environment in our photos too, to give the images more context. To trigger the cameras, we're using these. Now these are PIR sensors, and it's actually quite interesting how they work, right? So they've got two pyro... Right, Ed, nobody cares. Basically, they sense when an animal appears and then trigger the camera to take a photo. Camera trapping is a discipline in itself. However, like all types of wildlife photography, it is of paramount importance that the welfare of the animal takes priority over getting a photograph. Now, we are going to be using flashes, so we've taken a couple of necessary precautions to make sure that we're not harming any of the wildlife here. So firstly, we're only going to be doing this for a few nights, so any animals that do frequent the area will only be subjected to the flashes for a few evenings at most. And the second thing we've done is to make sure we're using the flashes on their lower power setting. That means they should mimic some other sources of light that the animals here might encounter anyway, like lightning strikes and headlights from cars on the nearby country roads. Ethics lesson over, it was now time to set up our traps. Tupperware camera plate boy went first. So I've chosen to set my camera up here 
just near this lovely log, and I'm looking up at the deciduous forest, loads of dead wood, and I'm hoping that a pine martin will just run into frame into the composition. I need you to be nice and low, and as if you're a pine martin coming along the log. OK, anything for you? Ready? Oh, oh it's going already. Wow. Oh, that's brilliant. Look at that. <laughs> Happy? Yeah, that's perfect. Nice. Well done. Important testing complete, it was now time for Mr. All My Shirts Are Too Big to set up his trap. Right, so I've set up my camera trap by this fallen tree that's fallen on to an old stone wall and the whole scene is just covered in moss. So if you come around here, right, so the composition I'm going for is trying to make the most of the leading lines. So you've got this huge tree just drawing you into the image and then it curves around to follow the wall. And I think it'll look absolutely brilliant if a little pine martin runs along here and looks at the camera. Yep, head up, big smile. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> now all we had to do was leave the area and wait. Let's go have a beer. After leaving our camera traps alone in the woods for a few days, we returned to see if they'd managed to capture yeah. anything. Your legs are longer than mine, this isn't fair. <laughs> uh. I'm absolutely buzzing and it's all still there. No way. My shoddy setup worked. Although the gear was fine, had it managed to get Harry any yeah, decent right, shots? There's not a lot on there. That's it, there's nothing on there, man. No triggers. Damn. That's really annoying because it's still triggering. Oh no, poor Harry. Anyway, let's check my trap. Yeah. Oh, it's not triggering. Unless the batteries run out. Oh, it's run out of battery. No way. After powering up the camera with the spare battery, I was treated to nothing. No. Bugger. But this is all part of the risk of trying to photograph... Bloody animals. <laughs> Bloody wildlife. It's a shame. We persevered with our project, though, and this time we got off to a good start. Look at that. That is undoubtedly pine martin dropping. They're, they're rowan berries. Harry, why don't you taste it to see how fresh it is? I mean... Go on. Guess, mate. I'm not, not <laughs> tasting that. Yes, oh, nice. OK, so trigger. It's a good sign. Nothing. Feeling hopeful after finding the Martin poo, it was now time to see what six days of waiting had produced. Ev, there's a pine martin on there. <laughs> yes! Oh, my there's a pine martin on there. Oh, look at that. Yes. There's a pine martin! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> There'd been multiple triggers, giving me a nice variety of shots to choose from. I was over the moon. <laughs> of all the triggers, this one is my favorite. I just love its curious pose and how the log highlights how small the Martin really is. What a result. Spurred on by Harry's success, we went to see what kind of results I'd managed to get. <laughs> oh, no way. <laughs> you got a vole. You got a vole. It's not a pine martin. No. This isn't a pine martin. It's a cheeky little vole who wishes to remain anonymous. Never mind. At least I might have one more shot at getting some kind of success. Unfortunately, Harry's had to go back down south because clearly he's a, he's a less devoted photographer than me. But I'm up here for a few more days, so I'm going to leave this trap here. Now, we know the pine martins are in the area because we've seen them on the trail cams and they've triggered Harry's trap up there but we don't know if they come to this exact area. But the thing is, this is wildlife photography, so you need to take risks. And I really, really like the composition I've found. So if it pays off, brilliant. If not, then at least I know I tried. Oh, come on, Pine Martins. Please come through this way. Please.
As I made my way over to the trap, I became increasingly aware that if I wasn't successful, then not only would I not have any Pine Martin photos, but Harry would. The stakes were high on this one. Ah, take that, Harry. I can photograph Pine Martins, too. You can tell that this Pine Martin is a youngster because his tail is quite tight, like a cat's tail. And as it gets older, that tail will get bushier and bushier. So you can tell that this little one is still quite young. After collecting the gear and heading back to the car, the only thing left to do was to call Harry. Hello? <laughs> yeah, guess what? Uh, triggers? Loads of triggers in daylight. You can see all the environment and the pine martin. It looks amazing. Are you f***ing kidding me? You wasn't going to get any. <laughs> Why but, did you have to freaking get triggers? How, how, many, how many triggers did you get? Oh, uh, a couple of hundred. Oh, uh, anyway, man, I'm, I need, I'm gonna go because I, I want to go and get them on the computer and see if they're okay. Yeah, <laughs> Alright, see you in a bit. Bye bye, ciao. Bye -bye. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. I just hope they're better than Harry's. Oh, so good. And here it is my daylight Pine Martin photo. Was it worth 10 days? Absolutely it was.